Hello everybody, picking it up a little bit here and hopefully one or two of you will go off to Max 3DS so I don't have to do this all. And again, I'm just pointing you out to the great plethora of tools out there and trying to tie a little bit into some of this basic knowledge that some of us are quickly losing. And one of those things that many of us are quickly losing is how actually, or, or gaining, as the case would be, is how projections work on the Earth. So in that vein, or <clears throat> memory about iambic, conformal, all the different stuff about projections, projection systems, and how we often kind of take a, something that's a sphere, hence the world, an ellipse or an ellipsoid, and then portray it in a flat 2D world. So what I'm going to show you is, right here, is how you can go back, make, go about making your own world. And you're going to start basically by just draft, drawing on a sheet of paper a round world and using as many colors as you like and then getting that scanned. But make sure it's kind of round because what you're going to do next, at least for now, is to come into SketchUp and go about learning to make a sphere. Now I'll do it here in full knowledge that there's a lot of other tutorials that do it for you. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to basically remember that the shift and the control key are the big things to remember when you're working in SketchUp in Windows. If you're an Apple, you'll need to use the Apple key a lot or the Alt key. So I'm going to grab and draw a circle here, just making it to some shape. Eventually, you might want it to be, have a particular size. I'll make my circle with a radius of 50 feet by typing in that, and I've got a circle there. Now, another thing that we remember in SketchUp <coughs> is that we want to always make sure that we have a box around here that we can come back to so we can kind of grab our coordinate system. There are other ways to do it, but I don't, you know, know don't know them. I'm going to now make a circle that actually is n at 90 degrees or twisted about this circle. So watch how I do that. I say I want to make a circle or I type a C. I grab the edge of the face and hold the shift key, which holds my face. I go to here and I just draft a circle there. Now the circle, the second circle I drafted is just so I can spin the one around the other to make a sphere. So watch how we do that. And once again, on a lot of these, you're not going to remember the steps. You just want to remember the concepts. And I want to point out this idea of going and making the actually just hitting this make a sphere button. This is a solid sphere from sketchy physics is also fine as well, but you're much better off learning about revolutions when you're dealing with uh, 3D revolutions and extrudes and sweeps and the like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one face, grab the follow me tool, and then grab that, and it went the other way. So I want to do the opposite. So edit undo extrude. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say grab that face, sorry. I'm going to grab that, tell it follow, and go to the larger one, and I now have the circle. Now, at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and turn on the hidden geometry, because if our idea is to cast down upon a sphere, we really want to know where the poles of the sphere is. And you can sort of see it here, but you can definitely see it when you do this and turn on hidden geometry. And now you see what you've got now is a sphere, and more or less you can see the latitude lines and the longitude. Remember the latitude lines act like a ladder, the longitude go up and down, so every, our world is turned on its side. So what we can now do is take that sphere, we're going to select across, grab first, grab the rotate tool, go to the face, hold a shift key, and I'm just going to turn it around some arbitrary point here and turn it to be 90 degrees up. Again, those specific skills you'll gain as you start playing around with a program like this, but what I want to show you right now is how you then go about and bring in and cast cast a picture down upon this the sphere and you so you do that by importing some JPEG or PNG file or some sort of raster image getting it lined up perfectly exploding it and then using the paint tool it's, it's called projecting projection so you're casting lights light that's parallel I'm sorry perpendicular to the plane of your image down upon the 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 model here so watch how this goes this will introduce you to file import you have to know where things are in this case I put them in the desktop you have to know you want to use it as an image a texture or a match photo we're gonna bring this in as an image not as a texture to start 
you're going to hit mark world in this case we're going to bring it in and we want it to flip to the right spot the right plane it's easier than do it that way than to flip it around later so i grab that box and put it out here okay now what i need to do and this can be relatively difficult i need to go ahead and get that thing lined up with my world so i might want to even get the scale correct what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that in sketchup you grab first then you take your tool and would be move from where you want to be and it should kind of grab it tends to grab along the plane and in all reality you can leave it there you don't need to pull it back out um, it can be rather difficult to do that so I'm gonna leave it there for now and just but very often it's nicer to push this out to a box what would be your your light box or your projected plane so that said, you know, it's realized it's maybe it could be a little bit bigger, so you can use the scale tool. All right. And I'm going to move this back to here. Once you've got all that lined up, what you're going to do now is you're going to explode. We're going to get used to this concept of explode in a lot of drafting programs. Taking this image that is working as one unit, I'm going to click on it, right click, and hit explode. At that point, I can now go to the paint tool. In the paint tool, I want to turn it so I use the eyedropper. What that's going to do, it's going to suck up the image in something called a projected image. So now when I paint something, and I'm going to do that now by grabbing everything there, and now I use the paint tool, and I cast the light upon it. And so when I go upon that and I hit an erase, you see that I have, in fact, I'm right clicking, erasing, I have my world. And the bad side of this is that the back side is also projected there. So in all reality, when you're really going to do this, you're going to want to go ahead and turn this thing around. You see how it pushed it around to the other side. So you want to do a hemisphere at a time. But if you notice, that in fact is now everything is cast upon projected upon that sphere and so as you kind of spin around the sphere you know there will we won't do with the physics end of this which is spinning the spinning the sphere or having the sphere rotate about its axis roll and then maybe rotate about some other large axis the sun the moon the earth and the milky way but that's all possible when the computer doesn't you know capitulate on you or or just kind of give up my computer this one's having problems with some of this stuff I'm going to point out I'm working in SketchUp 7 in this case on campus computers we have left SketchUp 6 because SketchUp 6 though slower or not as great as SketchUp 7 does have an ability to import drawing files my recommendation for those at home is to upload SketchUp 7 and then just deal with the file of transferring when you're going back and forth through campus. So that said, watch, I can now go ahead and take this, go back here, go view, turn off the hidden geometry. Now I see it without my hemispherical lines. I can, if I'm smart, I can go ahead, take and right click. Anytime you have things that should be cohesive, you make a group in SketchUp or a component in SketchUp and a block in AutoCAD. So I'm going to make this a group. I'm going to call it Mark's World. Mark World, not Wayne's World, Mark World. If you haven't seen Wayne's World, you've missed out. Okay, and now I do that for now, you know, for any number of reasons, just to show you, you can now replicate Mark's World. I'm hitting the control key. Control lets you copy when you're doing something. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put it 250 feet away. And then I'm gonna put it now 1,000 feet away and now 250 feet away okay so that can control how far away so maybe that's at 250 feet once again select first tool next control click once 1000 feet away so you get this kind of sense that you can start really multiplying worlds if you would so um, in days of yore we might have done this with marbles and that might be a better way to do it. Kind of come up with your own marble, not your own world. Um, we could do the Horton Here's a Who thing in this. 
Uh, we won't do that either. But just realize that's all out-of-the-box stuff. So that's how you do that in SketchUp. Thanks for listening.